Hey everybody, my name is Josh and today I wanted to give you a tour of my one car garage workshop. Now before we jump into the tour, I want to mention a couple things. The first is I just rent. I don't own this workspace and so I had to kind of keep that in mind when I was building this space out. I do custom camper van conversions. So the shop isn't necessarily tailored towards one specific trade. It's not a dedicated woodworking space or machine shop. I do the full build on the camper van, so everything from the cabinetry to setting up the electrical system. And so I need to be able to do a little bit of everything in this workshop. The garage is roughly 20 feet front to back and 12 feet side to side. You'll see this throughout the tour, but there are a few doors and windows that I had to factor in as well when I was laying things out. There's a door, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but just back in that corner there. One window along this wall over here as well, and one window straight behind me. And there's also a breaker box in that back corner. And then there is a service door just to the left of the garage door opening. I was just starting to clean out my workshop because I just finished up a van build and it dawned on me that if I'm gonna do a shop tour, I should probably show it in the condition that it is usually in. This workspace is by no means perfect and there is a lot of room for improvement. And so if you do have any ideas or tips and tricks that could make this space work better, I'd be very interested to hear your input in the comments below. So I'll quit rambling and I will jump behind the camera here and I'll go through the setup that I have and what works and what doesn't. Another thing I'll mention real quick before we get started is there will be tons of links to most of what you see in here uh, in the description of the video. We'll get started up in this front corner here. As you can see, there is a wall mounted dust collector set up and this is strictly dedicated just to the table saw. It's just using a four inch hose. It is, ow. It is one of those Rockler hoses, the dust right ones, makes it easy to pull on and off of different machines with their little adapter ports. I'm not sponsored by Rockler. Below the dust collector, there's a set of saw horses I made. I have no idea how long ago, but they're still kicking. Right next to that, a small little ladder it's a little more congested in this corner than I would like. And then lastly down here is just a small little planer. It's just on a little slab of plywood with a couple casters. Uh, I don't use it a whole lot. I keep it down there because it does use the same four inch port that I have set up on the table saw so I can just quickly swap over the hose. And then if the weather permits, I can uh, use the planer outside. And then right up front in the shop is my table saw. Now this is a 10 inch DeWalt table saw. My grandpa gave me this, so I don't know the nitty gritty details of it, but it did come with some steel legs for the base, um, leaving the whole bottom of the table saw open and the dust collection was not, well, there wasn't any. So I made this little cabinet here. It has some leveling feet as well as some flip down casters, so it's easy to move around. And then I installed a big dust chute connected to a hose so that I could hook up the dust collector. And it works surprisingly well. It's not perfect by any means. There's no blade guard dust collection, so there's still gonna be dust that goes kind of all over, but it's better than it was when I first uh, got the table saw. There's a tiny little drawer down here with some little accessories and my push sticks used to be Velcroed here, but they, uh, they fell right off and now they're shoved into the drawer handle. Down next to the table saw is this little cart that I made. Um, it's just a little shop stool, but I saw a photo of something similar online and I thought that would be a nice addition to have. It has a little drawer for some storage, a little side shelf, and then I, I tossed on a little magnetic strip for random bits and, and whatnot. It has a few locking casters so you can kind of stay put when you're working on the huge hill of a driveway that I have. Moving our way back, you will see uh, one of those Craig track saw deals. It's not the most accurate thing, but I also don't do the best job at keeping up on its accuracy. It is nice for breaking down sheet goods, which I do try to do outside, again, when the weather's permitting, but I do thankfully have a large enough open space towards the back of the shop that I can break down panels with the door closed. And it just tucks away in this little holder here. It's honestly not that great. It always bumps into the one of the legs here of the workbench, but I did want to make use of this uh, kind of wall space in the back of the workbench. 
And then you'll see a few French cleats on the end of this workbench. I kind of adopted the French cleat system into this workshop. And so it's clearly being underutilized, but it uh, is there if I use it one day. I have stored some clamps here in the past. I tried to make the overhang of the table A, big enough for the little vise that's installed, but B, to keep from knocking anything off as I walk past or carry material past. And then onto the workbench. This serves both as a workbench as well as an outfeed table for the table saw. It is six feet wide by three feet deep. I installed a small little vise right here on the end. Uh, it just has a quick release so you can slide it out quickly as well as back in. I stuck one little strip of T-Track here. I just installed the one here, but I have been contemplating adding more. The top is just made of MDF and then it's wrapped in some maple to try to protect the edges. It's pretty flat. It's definitely got a, a dip in the center here. And that's actually something I'm hoping to address fairly soon with a little revamp of this workbench. The front of this bench is kind of a disaster at the moment. When I originally made it, I had just installed these three drawers here, but I quickly realized they are both just not quite deep enough for my needs, as well as if I'm using the vise and clamp anything of pretty much any length, this will not be able to open. It'll bump into the piece, and that's where I used to store my chisels. Later on, I installed these bigger drawers here. They just give me a little bit more height for storing taller items. Below that are two giant open cubbies. Super great for collecting a bunch of dust. <laughs> on this side, I have some corrugated tubing for some electrical, trying to keep dust out of that stuff with this plastic tote. Some speakers that one day might end up in a van. Uh, and there is also a router table back in there, but I don't find myself using a router table as much as I would like to. Clearly, because it's in the back of my workbench. On this side, there's a little cheap bench top joiner. Also something that I'm hoping to get on maybe its own stand or at least in a more accessible spot in the shop. Next to that, some scrap wood. Don't know why that's there. And then a good old empty cardboard box. Don't need that. A nice cheap drill bit. <laughs> drill bat. A nice cheap set of drill bits because I bought them I don't know how many years ago and somehow still haven't gone through them all. And then tucked up back in the corner of this is a small little shop vac. And then there is a little port that allows me to connect a hose out the other side here. Just like the table saw, this workbench has uh, leveling feet as well as some of those flip down casters so that I can move it around relatively easy. Connected to that shop vac that I just mentioned is this hose connected to this arm that can swing out from the wall. This has definitely made my life a lot easier and less dusty. I don't remember the exact brand, but I bought this hose accessory kit and it has a bunch of different sized adapters allowing me to connect a bunch of different tools. And it tucks away nice and easy, you can hang up your hose and then it just hangs out on the wall. Below that, the good old ear protection. It's a great place for spiders to live, but I tried to keep them in a spot that I could easily grab them if I was using the table saw or working on this side of the workbench. Continuing down this wall, you're going to see a four by eight sheet of plywood set up for the French cleat system. Now, like I mentioned earlier, because I am renting, I installed the French cleats on a full sheet of plywood so that when the time comes to move, I can just take the four by eight sheet off and all the French cleats will come with it. Just like the side of the workbench, this French cleat wall is probably very underutilized, but I try to keep a lot of the uh, most frequently used tools close to the workbench there. Handful of clamps. You can see a couple of the impact in the drill. I feel like a weatherman. And then a bunch of the cordless 18 volt Makita tools. I am not sponsored by Makita, but I do love using their tools and it's kind of the ecosystem that I bought into. To be honest, I don't know why this is here. I don't use it enough for it to be taking up a big chunk of my French cleat wall, but another thing that I'll address when the shop revamp happens. 
And directly below the French cleat wall are two Husky toolboxes. And these are just loaded with all the hand tools. I do try to keep some electrical in some of these drawers, keeping some of that stuff away from all the sawdust. My hand looks insane. I'll run through the drawers real quick. The top drawer closest to the workbench is primarily all fasteners. Then we got some chisels and files, a bunch of miscellaneous hand tools, pliers, vice grips. Nice assortment of hammers and some paint supplies. On the right, some marking and measuring devices. This drawer is looking a little rough at the moment. Router accessories and bits. Drill bit accessories. And kind of the PPE drawer. There's knee pads, gloves, respirator filters, and all that good stuff. And in this box, we have some sockets and kind of a catch-all area in that corner. Screwdrivers. I don't know what's going on in this drawer. This drawer is dedicated to a lot of 12 volt accessories such as outlets and LEDs, on off switches and those kinds of things. And then this drawer is just a mess at the moment but this is all 12 volt related wiring and electrical accessories. Up here we got our wrenches some staplers and staples. This is kind of a cable management drawer. The last drawer down here is another mess, but this drawer is dedicated to electrical as well, just primarily higher voltage stuff. I did modify both of these boxes. Uh, I swapped out the factory casters that come with them for some four inch casters. I believe the factory ones were five. Don't quote me on that. And I did this just to bring the height down below my outfeed table. That way when I was running wood through the table saw, I never bumped into one of these boxes. Also, the casters that I installed are all swivel casters. The factory ones are only two. And so it makes maneuvering these toolboxes around a lot easier. And the corner of shame. This wasn't supposed to be like this. During the course of a van build, and I'm sure like most of you, when you're in the middle of a project, I did have a deadline and one thing led to the next and things just started to pile up here. My scrap bin started to overflow and so this was kind of the catch-all for everything. This all has to be moved out of here and it is actually a big open space. Although I can't stick something here that protrudes too far into the garage because of the doorway here. And just above the corner of shame are a bunch of clamps. Honestly, I don't have a ton of clamps. Again, this isn't a dedicated woodworking shop, but the woodworking that I do tends to lean more into the cabinetry side of things. Very odd cabinets because they are going in camper vans, but cabinets nonetheless. Some marking and measuring tools here and some tape for whatever reason. Um, and then this is a circle cutting jig for my little palm router. I think that this whole entire corner could be better utilized. I don't know if it just needs a revamp for being a dedicated area for clamps. I am definitely interested to hear some suggestions if anybody has any. On the end of the toolbox, a little magnetic uh, catch tray for any nuts and bolts. And then the good old Tommy D poster. Finally making it to the back wall of the shop, just next to the door here. Garage door opener, remote for uh, air filter that I do have hung up in the ceiling. Small little panel with French cleats on it holding the battery chargers and the, the tunes. And below that, of course, is the scrap bin. Like I mentioned, a lot of the woodworking that I do tends to be more cabinetry and so I work with plywood quite a bit. Up top here is just one big long shelf with a bunch of totes labeled with what's in them. Um, for example, this one is plumbing stuff. It's in a tote just trying to, again, keep sawdust out of there. But I started to use these before I even had a garage workshop. Uh, at one point I was just in a basement. And so these were just a, an attempt to try to organize some of the stuff that I had at the time. But they do a good job of keeping what's inside them dust free. 
Working our way towards that back corner, uh, you'll see a little shop vac just hanging out here. This is not in a good spot, but it was a desperate attempt to control some of the dust from a sander that we'll get to in just a minute. This is also my landlord's. I found it in the basement. And then I have some various bits of trim and dowels um, desperately hung on some pegboard here just to try to keep it from tipping over in the scrap bin. There is a, a fan here in the window, as you can see, to, in the warmer months, try to get somewhat of a breeze. But for the most part, the garage is in the shade, so it doesn't get too hot in here, as well as to possibly extract some dust. Like I mentioned earlier, tucked up in that corner is a breaker box. And so behind this light and extension cord, you can see it lives in that back corner. Now this big kahuna of a, of a cabinet slash workbench serves a few purposes. As you can see, it does hold a handful of benchtop tools, drill press, and a little benchtop sander. This is what that shop vac that you just saw is connected to. This was a small parts storage thing. Um, it was meant to hang on some French cleats, but for whatever reason, I moved it over here and it has not moved for the duration of the last van build. This is a cutting mat here that is more useful than I kind of anticipated. It's nice to be able to cut something with a knife and know that you're not damaging any of the work surfaces, especially my workbench being MDF. Watch, this is gonna stay here for the next three months. When I first built this whole thing, it was plumbed for some dust collection with the straight tubing here because there were originally three machines set up on this bench top here. I removed one of those and then just connected one of those flex hoses to try to get better dust collection for the sander. And then a couple outlets were also installed because there's an outlet behind this whole contraption and these basically serve as an extension cord. Just behind the sander here is a, an auto on switch for the vacuum so that when the sander flips on and just a second later, the vacuum will also kick on. Behind the work surface here is actually storage for sheet goods. And in making that, it created a shelf up here that is great for storing miscellaneous items as well as sawdust. And then up there, again, just an attempt to try to keep some sort of organization. If you can't tell, I can't reach it very easily from where I'm standing, but I don't really work with metal too often. And so when I do need to access it, this whole thing is on casters and can roll out. And with that in mind, this whole cabinet rolls out and you can see that sheet goods storage I was talking about. It's a little empty at the moment, but I made the height here about maybe 50 inches or so to allow for storage of full sheets of plywood. And then a couple squares just hung on the end here. It rolls back in easy enough. There's a total of eight casters on this whole cabinet. Continuity. And so even when there are a bunch of sheets of plywood stored in this thing, it does roll around fairly easy. Nothing too fancy, just a bunch of drawers. This far right drawer over here is dedicated to drill press accessories. Not a whole lot going on in here. I don't use a drill press a ton. Next to that, we have a bunch of different hinges. Piano hinges, concealed hinges, you name it. Then, as you can see, handful of drawer slides and I guess a couple of those magnetic strips. And then this last drawer here is just full of sanding accessories. As you can see, it's a nice big mess, but at least it's all in one place. These cabinets are fairly empty at the moment. Typically they are stored with a lot of the components that go into a van build. And so for the time being, they are pretty empty. I have a big crate of casters over in that one. Uh, and then this one is, was just cleaned out. This set of cabinets back here are the, uh, the junk drawer of the bunch. There's a ton of stuff kind of shoved in here. Um, typically overflow stuff, so like screws that come in big giant containers. The excess of, of most things can be just shoved in this catch-all of a cabinet here. Uh, a lot of dust collection and vacuum accessories. And then there's a propane tank back there with a small little heater. I don't have a very well insulated shop and I'm also not working out here full time, especially in the winter. Shameless plug here, I do own a small leather goods business and so that's why you'll see a lot of leather door handles and drawer pulls throughout the shop here. They work really well and they are 
can't really break them and they're soft. So if for whatever reason, if you bumped into one, it's not gonna hurt you or anything like that. And finally, making our way back around towards the front of the shop here, Old Faithful. You'll see a few more of those French cleat panels. These are, of course, dedicated to some lumber storage, primarily off cuts. It's a little overflowing at the moment, clearly. And then the chop saw station or miter saw station. This thing has been modified a handful of times, but the latest rendition just features two independent standalone cabinets. Both have one drawer on the top. <laughs> Clearly empty, not being very utilized. And then on this side, two cabinet doors. Down in the bottom there, it does house my air compressor that is connected to a hose that does run up to a retractable reel up in the ceiling. A few miscellaneous filters for that dust filtration system I mentioned earlier. And then a little drawer that pulls out for a handful of power tools. And then a platform that just Bridges between the two cabinets supports the saw. And then I built this box around it in some attempt to try to control some of the dust that this thing uh, loves to make. Much like the sander, the chop saw is on an auto on off switch with a dedicated vacuum connected to it. These panels on the front just slide in and out. So if you do have to make any angled cuts or anything like that, you're not limited by these front panels. In the back behind the saw is another one of those big funnels like I mentioned I have for my table saw. And so there is a splitter underneath here so that the shop vac is both collecting dust that lands behind the saw as well as the hose that connects to the back of the dust collection port on the actual miter saw itself. It's not even connected. And this is using Rockler's FlexiPort dust collection hose and clearly it works very well. It never stays on. Another upgrade that I will hopefully be making soon. Oh, my mic. This cabinet, same concept, one drawer up top here, a um, couple extra saw blades in there, as well as a little stop block for making repeatable cuts. You can see there's a little bit of T-track installed in the top of this cabinet, and then Two cabinet doors. Uh, this time there are two pull-out trays, one on the top and one on the bottom. These are typically filled up with components for a van build, so they are fairly empty at the moment. The good old gardening corner. With there being a service door here, I have to stay a certain distance away so that the door can swing all the way open, but it does let me mount some of the low profile things on the wall, keeping them off the floor. A lot of times I just use a leaf blower to blow all the sawdust out of the shop. And so keeping things off the floor helps make that process a little easier. I do have a little bit of additional storage in the rafters overhead. As you can see, a bunch of two by material, a bunch of cardboard templates for the different van body styles. And then over the garage door, there is a, a very quickly assembled shelf to hold random odds and ends. So I think that's gonna wrap up this tour. Hopefully I covered everything. Uh, I'm sure there's some things that I missed. If there is something that I didn't go over or you want more info on, definitely leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to as many questions as I can. As you can see, the shop is overflowing with offcuts and it's a bit of a mess at the moment, but that's all right. It is a workshop and it's uh, definitely put through its paces. It's by no means perfect, but it's definitely an upgrade from what I had before. If you made it this far, I appreciate you taking the time to tour this space with me. And again, if anyone does have any suggestions or recommendations, I'm all ears. I enjoy seeing how other people set up their shops. And so I'm definitely eager to hear input from all of you. And hopefully you found some of the ways that I set up my shop helpful and they can help you set up yours. I will be making some major updates to the shop, such as a new table saw. And so if that interests you, definitely consider subscribing. And if you like the video, you can give it a good old thumbs up. It's definitely appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. It's over. My seven-year-old neighbor is on his roof cleaning out his gutters. So...